A lot of what we do here is work with people all over the world. Having a rural English studio, you sort of think, well, how can you possibly do all the big media work that, that we're lucky enough to do? Connectivity, particularly in a rural area, is absolutely critical for us. We would not have a business here if we couldn't do that. I, yeah. I could do it if you like. Oh, my stomach. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Rolling. Ready when you are. Yeah. So we started the studio here in 2020. Stupidly, we decided lockdown was the perfect time to build the studio. Um, but originally, I started a company here called Audio Network, which, um, which operated here for years and years. And it moved out just before COVID, so it was the perfect time to get the builders in and start to build the studio. But it was something I'd wanted to do for years because we had this fantastic old barn and um, it just had ducks in it and goats and things like that. And it was time for it not to have that anymore. And I love the fact that it's suddenly turned into a place of making things and creating things, you know, whereas before it was just kind of forgotten and abandoned. Well, the plan for the studio when we started, right at the very beginning, we needed a room that was just amazing for pianos. There was very, very, there were very few places in London where you really knew the whole room was designed around recording pianos. And I always felt that this space was kind of the right size for doing that and to give us lots of different options. So the very first idea of the studio really was was all about all about the piano and having different types of pianos. Um, and yeah, so really the idea was to do something near my home so I didn't have to haul my sorry backside up to London all the time and, um, and, and to build it out here. And people come, you know. It's, I thought that was going to be a big problem and that people wouldn't actually come to the studio, but as it turns out, it's just not a problem at all. They love it. Having Steph as amazing as Steph, he will never say this to you himself, but he's actually got an incredible history as a musician himself. You know, he was the organist for the, for the Pope in the Vatican and St. Peter's. And when he at was 13 years at, old. Yeah, he was 13 years old. So what I think is unique about School from Studios is with the location, because it's quite, there is a quite a stunning area. Uh, you can park, you know, it's something that people take from for granted, but when you have to unload a drum kit and you don't have to fight the traffic of a huge city, it's, it's quite a bit, big, big advantage. I feel like everything is so relaxed. There's no stress, there's nothing, you know, we know what we are capable of and we know that we go and do that, you know, nothing gets past him. I try my best and keep up with him on, on, on the desk and on the computer. It's a great team, it's the perfect size. It just, it's just a very nice place to go to work. That's a good answer, pretty good answer. Well, what I do is I'm, I'm a sort of a, an improvising pianist. I've earned my living improvising ever since the year dot. And all my teachers used to say to me, why don't you stop messing around and, and, and play the music? You know, you'll never get anywhere doing that. But ironically, I've um, sort of built a career out of it. Well, look, why didn't we give it a go? Do you have a go? Yeah. Sure. Okay, okay. So, so give it a go. And let's, um, let's well, start, well, we'll start with Ode to Joy, Harry. Okay. And start by just playing a few bars of it straight so everybody knows what tune we're talking about. I've got my socks on because I tap my feet and that gets picked up on the mic, so I have to take my shoes off. He's very conscious of his feet today.
Harry. How did I meet you? It was through a friend. We had a friend. mutual friend. Yeah, yeah an amazing, uh, another great piano player called David Kenny, who we tease mercilessly all the time. He said, you should meet my friend Andrew. He would love what you do because I'm playing this stuff in different styles and having fun with music. He said, Andrew would really like that. So he introduced us and we came together and did a session. And we met, we fell in love and the rest is history, you know. Oh, God. I, my father was a vicar. And at the age of four, somebody presented us with an upright piano. I think one of the, the, the church members had passed away and then we, got, we inherited this piano and it was like a, a new toy in the house. And so I was picking out tunes, thinking this is what everybody would do. And everyone said, oh, he's got some talent there. Sent me to the church organist for lessons. And straight, I mean, I knew that I was going to, that was what I was going to do. I was gonna, you know, my, my vision was to play in hotels. I thought it was the height of sophistication to be in a black tie, sitting in the corner playing, you know, sort of cocktail music. Of course, the reality is it's incredibly boring doing that. And there's no recognition at all. And the money is appalling. But I knew it was going to be my career right from, you know, very single digit age. Is there any piano on the session tomorrow? I think there might be, actually. I like recording at school farm studios because it's um, it's a weird thing when you come in. You know, there's there's all this pressure. Not only is it your own material, so you're making yourself vulnerable, like this is my creation. But you've also, I tend to write things that are far too complicated for me to play. So you need, a, I suppose, very supportive people. And that's what Andrew is absolutely brilliant at. He, he, you'll, you'll do the most awful take of something and Andrew will just say, yeah, great, well done. Um, I think you've got a better one in you, you know, and it's all it's all very lovely and you feel your shoulders going down. You don't have that terror of the red light recording thing. It's a very it's a it's a beautiful atmosphere, a beautiful building. The piano is amazing and a very incredibly supportive and helpful staff. So it's it's just it's a beautiful experience all around. Chase the post, Harry. Thanks. I mean, the truth is, when we moved here, uh, they, everyone was talking about the internet superhighway. Here, it was more like a sort of uh, a, a little muddy footpath going somewhere. There was basically no connection, and you were sitting there with a dial-up, waiting for things to happen. And this, yeah, uh, I think you should that, do that in the style of Rat Um <laughs> But, but honestly, it's revolution. It's, it's changed. Rural businesses can do these things and can participate in international media projects and all sorts of other things because of that connectivity. Without it, you know, we would be, um, you know, we'd all have to be in London and who wants to do that? I do. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of what we do here is um, work with people all over the world and particularly with people who are Hollywood um, film composers. And so weirdly, having a rural English studio, you sort of think, well, how can you possibly do all the big media work that that we're lucky enough to do but with modern technology and with the connection that we now have here we actually uh, do sessions live where we'll have the orchestra in the room and the composer and and maybe um, other team members are in the US in LA dialing in live and they're listening in stereo to what we're doing here they can hit their space bar on their computer and on the zoom they can speak to everybody in the room and it's like having and it really is seamless and i should think now and i do those sessions as well where we're doing bigger orchestras which we do in vienna and so like last week on friday i was i was uh, sitting for the day at a huge orchestra in, in in vienna everything is seamless i could direct them then they send the files over to us these are big files so you need a great big fat uh, internet pipe to get them all here we can download them, then we can do all the pickups and the solos, and, and I think we did trumpet or something on those on those strings here the following day. So it's like it's all in the same room, and that connectivity, particularly in a rural area, is absolutely critical for us. We would not have a business here if we couldn't do that. So the serious question of today is, is why we have alpacas. 
and uh, it's a very, very serious. How Packers, we have them mostly because they're funny, um, but there are also reasons. We, we have a working farm here and we have sheep, and when the sheep are lambing, uh, if you have alpacas around, they protect the lambs. They're very, very territorial. They are haughty. They are, in many ways, unpleasant beasts. They spit at you if they don't approve of what you're doing. They're very tasty. <laughs> oh, don't say that. No, you can't say that. Tasty. Bless them. But they're very funny. Yeah. And so we... And people come here, and it's never, they never talk about the piano, the amazing mics, the room, and they yeah. always go back and they're talking about the alpacas. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.